I'm here at Britain's only World Heritage Site, comparable to the Grand Canyon and the Niagara Falls as an area of outstanding interest. This is part of 95 miles of stunning coastline across the south coast of Britain and it records 185 million years of Earth's geological history. This is Lyme Regis, part of the Jurassic Coast. Now I want to find out what the environment was like here at Lyme Regis and the Jurassic coastline 200 million years ago. And the most obvious indicator that everybody notices when they come to this part of the country is this. It's an ammonite and there are hundreds of them across this beach. Ammonites lived in the ocean and swam very much like the modern day Nautilus by controlling its buoyancy and moving up and down in the water. And by doing this they could spread out across the world. Now, ammonites could grow from three metres across to as small as a penny and they were to dominate the world's oceans for more than a hundred million years. So now we know that Lyme Regis is a marine environment. But what more can we find out from the rocks around us? This limestone platform is absolutely jam-packed with ammonites and shows that during the Jurassic period this part of the world was absolutely teeming with life. Take a close look at this boulder and we see even more evidence for what the environment was like here 200 million years ago. All the way through this boulder and other boulders on this beach you can see patterning and you can see these thick branching structures separated by much finer flecks scattered throughout. Now the branching structures, they're very similar to the kind of burrows that crustaceans and shrimps make on the seabed today. And these fine flecks, well that can be explained if we think of them as worm burrows infilled by a lighter coloured mud. So if we've got worm burrows and we've got crustaceans and shrimps on the seabed, we now know that these tropical seas were quite still and there was very little deposition, there wasn't much mud being deposited on the top. So we have a tropical environment with very warm still waters. Further evidence for the kind of environment we find here can be seen in these fossils here. This is Gryphea, otherwise known as the Devil's Toenail. And like modern day oysters, they lived in groups nestled on the sea floor. And by looking at the way these fossils are sitting in the rock, we can see that they haven't been moved much from their life position. And this shows that there hasn't been much storm activity to move them around. Other than being completely crammed with ammonites, this boulder here reveals another secret about our location. This is driftwood. And driftwood shows that when these rocks were forming, we weren't very far from land. These rocks behind me, towering more than 20 metres high, start here in Lyme Regis, cross Britain and pop out again in Wales. And we're going to take a closer look to see what they reveal about the climate at the time when Britain was in a tropical latitude. To take a closer look, we can see that this cliff is composed of these thick lighter layers separated by much thinner, darker layers. Now the lighter layers, well that's limestone, and we know that limestone was formed when these tropical seas were very calm and very still. The much thinner, darker bands, that's mostly mud, and this mud was washed out from land. Every several thousand years there was a big storm. On land it would rain an awful lot and mud would be washed right out to sea to wash over the continental shelf and all the animals would be overwhelmed and would die to be deposited at the bottom to be preserved as fossils for us to find much later on. As the sun sets behind me, what have we learned here at Lyme Regis about this part of the Jurassic Coast? Well, 200 million years ago, this was a shallow, warm, tropical sea. Crustaceans and worms scurried about and buried themselves in the mud, while ammonites swam around in the waters and driftwood passed overhead. Every now and then, a huge storm event would occur on land and wash out huge amounts of mud, 
which would overwhelm the life in the sea and kill it off. But once again, life would spring back and over thousands and thousands of years, these rocks behind me were formed through great cyclic events to form what is now known as the Jurassic Coast.